Hey, right now, I want you to think of a favorite food, like get it in your mind, an actual food, okay? Now think of a food that you don't like. So a food you like, a food you don't like. Now, I want you to just briefly share that with somebody near you, okay? Take about 20 seconds. We'll give you about 20 seconds to do this. Share a food you like and a food you don't like. All right. So the reality is, uh, hey, thanks for doing that, by the way. The reality is most of us have access to really good food. Like we have great restaurants, uh, festivals that we can eat, like here at the Dublin Irish Festival, um, groceries uh, that are just abundant and farm markets. We even have rich soil here in this area, like we can grow our own food. Uh, we just have a great variety and abundance of food. And fundamentally, food is fuel, right? But it's not only fuel because God gave us taste buds. So food is also for our enjoyment. In addition, food can create community. Like in every culture, in every era, relationships, they just go deeper uh, a lot of times when we share a meal together. So for the next few minutes, I wanna talk about food. But more specifically, I wanna talk about, talk about some meals that Jesus ate and what that can teach us. So we're gonna call this the Jesus meal plan, okay? Kinda of hokey, but that's what we're calling it. And this isn't a diet. This is a lifestyle. Now, often we don't know what Jesus ate, but we do know how he used meals to positively impact people's lives. So we're going to consider seven meals with Jesus that are recorded for us in the New Testament. So the first one is in John chapter 2. And uh, Jesus and his friends and his family, they were at a wedding, but there was a problem. The, the people hosting the wedding, they ran out of wine. And that was a huge problem. It would be like going to a wedding today and have this great big reception. And like halfway through the meal, like all the food runs out. That would be horrible, right? That people would feel just like, oh, what do we do? Um, so at his mother's request, Jesus said, okay, I can help with this. And Jesus turned water into wine. So you and I, we probably are not going to change water to wine, but we can look around us. And if there's something going on that we can help with, we should do that. Because that's what Jesus did. Like, at this meal, Jesus was focused on helping people. Second meal is in Mark chapter 2. Now, Levi, also known as Matthew, he's a new follower of Jesus. And after he starts to follow Jesus, he has a huge like banquet for Jesus in his home. And uh, all these people are there, including the, quote, sinners, you know, the people with a bad reputation. And the religious leaders see who Jesus is eating with. And they, they say, man, if you were like a man of God, you would know who these people are and you wouldn't eat with them. And Jesus said, hey, I want you to know something. It's not healthy people that need a doctor, it's sick people. And Jesus was focused at this meal on people. It's what he always did. The third meal I wanna read for us, uh, we're gonna read it out of John. We're gonna start, it's this is in chapter six, we're gonna start in verse five. Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip for he already knew what he was gonna do. Philip replied, even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Tell everyone to sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. The number of men alone was about 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. Afterward, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, now gather the leftovers so nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. This meal is one of only two uh, miracles that are recorded in all four gospels. The other one is the resurrection of Jesus. And I love how Jesus says to the disciples, hey, you feed them. And they're looking around. They know that what they have is not sufficient to make an impact. But that's what's so cool about Jesus. He just wants us to bring to him whatever we have and he'll take it, he'll bless it, and he'll multiply it to be able to impact people's lives. Because again, for Jesus, it's not about the food, it's about the people. The next story is from Luke chapter 10 and Jesus is at the home of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And 
Mary is sitting with Jesus, just listening to him teach. But Martha, she's kind of preoccupied with all the details of the meal. She's just really focused on that stuff. And Jesus, while he appreciates Martha's serving, and, and we always want to be you know, people who appreciate serving others and being served, but Jesus is telling her, hey, Martha, you're focused so much on these details, you're missing what I have for you. And, and that's, I think, what Jesus wants to do with us. Like the, the relationship is way more important than the food or what your house looks like. Um, so just focus on the people and the relationships. That's what Jesus did. Um, we have a good friend from here in the Discover family who told us once, hey, if you're coming to see me, you can come anytime. If you're coming to see my house, give me two weeks notice. I think that makes sense. All right. The next one is from Matthew chapter 15. And the religious leaders, they're upset one more time. They're ticked off at Jesus. Why? Because this time Jesus and his disciples, they didn't do this, this traditional ceremonial washing. And, uh, Jesus says, hey, you know what? You're so focused on these traditions um, and these rituals that you're missing out, again, on the relationship. You're missing out. In fact, you're, you're totally like dishonoring people. You're dishonoring God by what you're doing. And Jesus doesn't want us to do that. Again, our, our hearts need to be aligned with God. That's way more important than any traditions or any rituals that we have. So um, moving on to the next one, this is in John chapter 21. Jesus has already died and he's been buried and he's been resurrected. But if you remember the story, Peter denied Jesus three times right after Jesus was arrested before he was crucified. And Peter is ashamed of that. He's feeling guilt. And uh, so this is after all that's happened. Jesus has resurrected. So after sharing this meal that Jesus prepared on the shore, uh, Jesus walks with Simon Peter and he says, hey, listen, I'm more interested in you and restoring you and forgiving you and still loving you. I want that relationship to be restored. And so Jesus uses the occasion of a meal to, to help restore his relationship with Peter. And I think sometimes we could sit around a meal with somebody we're not you know, in great shape with and uh, use that as part of the restoration process for that relationship. The final one I wanna look at just briefly is in Revelation chapter 19. And this is where Jesus has this huge wedding feast and it's for everybody who has placed their faith in Jesus. Now we already enjoy great food here on earth, but can you imagine what it's gonna be like in the new heaven and the new earth? It's, it's just gonna be so much better. There's gonna be this huge, fantastic celebration again for people who place their faith in Jesus and Jesus wants to share that meal with each of us. So there are other meals with Jesus in the Bible, but I think clearly Jesus believes that meals are a great way to positively impact people's lives. So with his example in mind, I just want to consider a few ideas uh, for our own lives. First, again, just hitting this point a lot, but we need to focus on people more than food, okay? Because again, every recorded meal about Jesus, that Jesus had with people was ultimately about relationships. Now, here's another thing. We need to eat more food, all right? Hey, that sounds good, but we need to eat more food the way that God made it. So, like, if you are what you eat, if you are what you eat, maybe that's why... You know, I can be so sweet at times. It's because I have so much sugar in my body. Or maybe I'm kind of salty because I eat way too many chips or way too many fries. Uh, but seriously, I need to eat more food the way that God made it. That's just a good thing for us to do. I think most of us are in that same boat. And here's a good phrase that I need to keep in mind. Less processed and more produce. I just think that's a good, good saying. So eat more food as God made it. Also eat less food. I know we don't talk about this much, but the Bible tells us that gluttony is a sin, like just eating and gorging yourself. And so that's painful for me. I don't know about for you. Um, also, if we, if we don't spend so much money on food, guess what? We're going to have more money for other things. And we're also going to feel better just physically. Um, another thing, so eat more food as God made it, eat less food, and then maybe eat no food, like the idea of fasting. And Jesus, when he fasted, he did it not out of tradition, but he did it so he could commune deeply with his heavenly father. And Jesus said, when you fast, I want you to do it for spiritual reasons, not for show. Um, here's another idea is grow some food. Like if you can plant a garden, because I think it's good for us to like use our hands, cultivate, take care of plants. And then we enjoy the food that God has given to us and uh, the opportunity we've had to work with that. I think a garden honestly can connect us with God, the creator and with God's creation. Uh, it's just a cool way to, to enjoy food. Um, I would also say give some food away, right? So the Dublin Food Pantry is one of our partners. 
Um, and actually at Discover, we do every second Sunday, we call Second Harvest. It's when we ask people to bring donations for the Dublin Food Pantry. And you can also volunteer to serve at the Dublin Food Pantry or any other pantry. Um, you can fix a meal for people who have a specific need, like somebody died in their family or somebody's in the hospital or there's been a loss of a job or whatever. Be great to bring a meal to somebody in that situation. Or you can just fix a meal simply to bless somebody. Like, you know, give the the family uh, the night off. Like the like if it's a single mom or a single dad, like with kids, like give them a meal so they don't have to do the meal prep that day. Um, or do it for a young couple or an older couple or an individual. You can also um, give some food away as you serve with Columbus Relief, another one of our ministry partners. Every fourth Saturday, we go to the uh, Columbus Relief campus and we give food out, we distribute it, we organize it, and we help do that. And you, again, you can work with Columbus Relief or any other homeless ministry, and you can volunteer anytime and just help give some food away. You can also be involved with another one of our ministry partners named Lifeline. They do ministry throughout the world. And one of the things they do in our area is meal packs. So you can go to Lifeline, or sometimes we do it as a whole church family, and we pack food. We pack these meals together and do thousands and thousands of meals, and then those get sent out to people in need throughout the world. And again, you can volunteer with Lifeline in any number of ways at any time. Let me say one other thing about food. This is specifically regarding restaurants. Um, if you talk to anybody in the food industry, the food service industry, they'll tell you that probably the worst day for the food service industry is Sunday, and the specific meal that's the worst is lunch. And here's why. It's because sometimes people go and they worship the King of Kings with their mouth, um, and then they go to the restaurant, and then they use their mouth to just proclaim how much they're the king or the queen. And uh, they're really rude. Uh, it's just crazy. So I would say... Hey, followers of Jesus, let's be kind and let's be people who tip generously and, uh, you know, don't make it awkward. Um, and I have a tendency to do that. But if the situation uh, seems right, you know, kind of follow the Holy Spirit's leading in the situation. Uh, just ask your server, hey, is there something I can be praying about for your life? Just a real opportunity to bless somebody. A uh, couple more things. Eat together. All right. Family meals are really important. A few years ago, the Council of Economic Advisors, uh, they reported this to the president, quote, the largest federally funded study of teenagers found a strong association between regular family meals and academic success, psychological adjustment, and lower rates of alcohol use, drug use, early sexual behavior, and suicidal risks. All I know that that's saying to us people is eat meals together as a family. And I would also say, hey, take that device, that phone, put that aside for that meal. Another thing you can do is just invite your neighbors. Like, are you grilling out or having a picnic? You're making spaghetti or tacos, you know, invite a neighbor or two. That's cool. Um, I would also encourage you uh, and myself to eat a meal with somebody you disagree with. Now, I know that seems crazy in our world, but we can disagree and not be disagreeable again, especially as followers of Jesus. And I would say we should go out of our way to build bridges, not walls. So try that sometime. Another great person to focus on is like a college student or some young adults connect with them and invite them to lunch, maybe even invite them over to your home. Um, and you can include international students in that. And again, we're blessed to have a partner called International Friendships um, who uh, work with international students and, and you have opportunities to invite them into your home for a meal, uh, maybe even Thanksgiving or Christmas or something like that. Do you know that 85% of all the international students in the United States never enter a home of a person here in the country. And they long to do that. They really want to have that opportunity. So may we as followers of Jesus be the people who are inviting international people to share a meal in our homes. Also, if you've ever been the new person in the situation, you know what that's like. It's kind of really awkward. And so you're, you're very grateful if somebody invites you in, especially like to have a meal, right? So that can be in the neighborhood. It could be at your job. It could be at school. It could be in any number of settings. Just look for those people who are new and try to connect with them and, and share a meal with them. Um, and that happens in the church community as well. And I would even say with the church community, just take time and go to lunch together. I mean, maybe do it on Sunday, maybe some other time, but um, spend time with people that you already know. And I would also tell you, man, develop some new friendships. Um, and uh, one of my friends, a member here of our church, um, he died unexpectedly a few days ago. And uh, he and I had a, a breakfast set up 
at Bob Evans for next week. Um, and I'm really sad that uh, I won't be able to have any more breakfasts with Ralph here on Earth. But I'm very grateful for the breakfast that Ralph and I did share. And even more than that, I'm really grateful that he's with Jesus because he placed his faith in Jesus. But, you know, the situation with Ralph, I'm, and it's just another reminder of how brief this life really is. And I would just encourage you guys, friends, man, would you just spend time with each other? It's so important. And make sure you're spending time with Jesus as well. So with these things in mind, I'd like for us to consider this question. How can I plan at least some meals this week to better enjoy what God has given me and share that with somebody? In reality, right after this service, most of us are going to go eat lunch. So how can we use that meal in a way that demonstrates our love for God and our love for people? Well, as we close this teaching, let's briefly look at one more meal with Jesus. It's commonly called the Lord's Supper or communion or the Eucharist, which just means Thanksgiving. And in a few minutes, we're going to share this meal together. And hopefully when you came in today, you got a cup that has the, the juice and the bread in it. If you didn't, just raise your hand right now and we'll have somebody come and give that to you. OK, so we're just going to read a couple of verses here in Luke chapter 22. When the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down at the table together. Jesus said, I've been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. In the spiritual meal of communion, we celebrate what only Jesus can do. We remember how he gave his life so we can have life. Jesus consistently used meals to bring value to people and to bring them closer to God. May we live in a similar way today and in the days to come.